already know what it is. It's Barbershop Conversations. Hit the subscribe and the like button today. So, you know, um, I guess a little credit, a little, a little credit to Ellie Setback, you know, for uh, <laughs> for calling this guy on, on, on the phone. He calls back on, on the toilet. <laughs> and uh, we, we exchanged some words, basically saying that we wanted to fight each other. And that, that kind of solidified it after that. You know, uh, he said, you know, the business got to work its way out. So I called business, and, and, and the business said that, that that was the direction that we would go in. And uh, since then, we've, I've been told that we will be fighting in April. Yeah. Vegas, LA? Nothing right now, man. Nothing right now. I called uh, on the way just to see what information I could give y'all. I'm being told that it's going to be April uh, after March Madness. So all eyes will be on us. And uh, I told them that I want to do it in, here in Vegas. So. Do you think this fight, this fight could happen if you didn't put any pressure on? Think you think you would have been in the same situation? Before? I think, I, I think um, without the pressure, it would I wouldn't have this information for you right now. Uh, I was told uh, once upon a time ago that it would be uh, that I would be face, facing Andre Berto. Um but I think since then, you know, the, a little pressure was applied um, all the way around. You know, from from Berto. Uh, I've been told that Kemp has wanted this fight for some time, so I think it's just you know a matter of, of the business working its way out, and obviously business says that after March Madness is when this fight should happen. So, what do you think of his rematch with Victor Ortiz? Uh, a great, great fight, uh, and I was front row. Anybody else watching on TV saw me ju jumping up and down. So, uh, unbelievable punch! Something we've seen him have, you know, from the moment he stepped in the ring as a pro. We've seen a, a great uppercut come from this guy. So, uh, definitely something to watch, watch out for, and and, um, and defend uh, along the, along that fight that I have on him. Sean, nobody wants to fight Sean Porter. Nobody's calling you out. Nobody's chasing. They're scared. They're uncomfortable. They'd rather face someone else. Bruno, you gotta respect him for calling you off and saying that's the fight I want in a time where nobody else is stepping up. Mm -hmm. And he, he has skills, his speed. What do you think about him? And what do you think about this guy? Ex exactly that. You know, um, uh, the guy is someone that I've watched and 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 got some moves from early on in his career. Uh, a guy that has always left it all in the rain. Uh, there's been numerous fights. And, uh, not numerous, but there's been one or two fights that he's had in the past, and I'm like, man, maybe they should stop this. And he, and he kept going, the corner didn't stop it, the refs didn't stop it, and he did what he was supposed to do until the last bell. Uh, we're speaking about a guy who has uh, tremendous uh, speed and quickness, especially with the counters that I just spoke on, especially the counter uppercut, you know. Uh, and the list goes on. Uh, experience, um, the heart of a warrior, he's a Haitian. You know what I mean? And, and it just goes on. The guy's a survivor. Not only that, he's a great fighter. So. Do you feel you're avoided, Sean? Uh, you always point to certain fighters that say they don't want it, but do you honestly feel you're being avoided? In I don't I don't know uh, because we're at a, at a point now in this sport where something's got to give, you know? Uh, Either I'm being avoided because someone's not being paid enough, or I'm being avoided because someone wants doesn't want to, you know, lose a fight. Uh, I'm being avoided because um, they're not going to get paid enough money. You know what I mean? So it's just it's one thing after another. Uh, I know that right now I'm at a point in my career where I'm going to demand the most money. I'm going to demand the best TV time, date, venue, the whole nine. So. Uh, it's just a matter of them wanting to get in the ring with me. You're gonna get your show, you're gonna get paid, and uh, you're gonna pick up some fans from being in the ring with me. You know, so uh, at the same time, you might end up with a busted nose or, or lip, <laughs> cut eye. I think uh, that's what's you know making these guys look somewhere else to fight. So speaking of avoided fighters, Floyd recently said that he feels all the welterweights are avoiding Errol Spence. I saw that. I saw that. You're in the welterweight division. I saw that. I don't think that. Well, I can speak for myself. I'm not avoiding uh, Errol Spence. Uh, I, I'm respecting my sport and respecting my position. My, my position says that I fight anyone in the top three, top two, the number one guy. That's who I fight. That's what my money commands. That's what 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 I command. My status. That's what I command. So I'm not avoiding him. Um, I guess at any rate, just kind of waiting on him to, to grab a belt and, and, and join us, uh, if anything. But um, I think uh, Floyd has been in the ring with Earl, and he's seen what Earl can really do, you know. And I think Earl, he, he knows Earl's uh, he knows Earl's um, potential. And saying all that, 
uh, he thinks that some of us may be avoiding him. I'm not. Um, Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman are getting the ring to fight each other. That's number one and number two right there. So um, they're not avoiding him. You know, uh, he's supposed to have a fight with Kell Brook dating back to I don't know how long. You know, so if anybody's avoiding or ducking Earl Spence, it's Kell Brook, the mandatory fighter for the IDF title. So if you were Kell Brook, you would take that fight with. I have to. Uh, I fought Kill Brook when I was the mandatory to fight, when he was the mandatory to fight me. So it's only right that he does the same thing. Uh, what's taking him so long? I don't know. And another uh, welterweight, Manny Pacquiao, looks like he's gonna fight a guy named Jeff Worm in Australia. Kind of a random fight. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, well, it was so random because I was hearing I was hearing Terence Crawford for a while. Uh, and you know, obviously, I throw my name out there once. You know, that hook isn't caught. I kind of, you know, just left it alone. And now I, I hear he's fighting the guy from Australia. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's tuning up for something big. You know? Who knows? Maybe he's going to take another one and then try to challenge someone in the top two or three in, in the division. Hopefully, I, I get that call. We'll see. How do you think that Garcia? I think it's going to be a great fight. I think it's going to be a great fight. I think. Uh, I think Keith Thurman is just kind of right above him in everything. Um, uh, especially, I think the deciding factor is going to be the game plan. I think that Keith's corner is going to come in with a game plan that's just going to be solid and be Danny Garcia's key, uh, corner in your plan. And you're commentating that fight too, right? I, I look to be commentating that fight, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Sean, they ask you. You figured you got your fight in April and you got to fight in March. Winner of that fight. That's what I want. I want. I. Uh, I wanted to fight well before April, you know, so that I could be in a position to say, "Hey, I fought. I won. Which one of you guys are gonna fight me?" You know. Um, well, I'm gonna wait till after this fight with Andre Berto. Obviously, let that one play out, and then we'll go after the winner of Keith Thurman and Dan Garcia. Sean, I missed the beginning. When is that Berto fight supposed to be? They tell you that? Uh, they're telling me April. Right no, now, no date, no network. No, no, no specifics as far as date, venue, or network just yet. What What about Berto interests you as a as a fight? I mean, to me, it's a what good, up? What about him? Yeah, I mean, no, it's a, it seems like a real good, interesting fight. But yeah, what, what's for your, sure. What was your point of view about when they offered um, that to you? I mean, my, my uh, I, I go all the way back is looking at him being a, a 2004 Olympian and me being a 2008 Olympian. I just feel like everything has lined up and it makes sense for me to fight Andre Berto right now. What, what um, about his style? His, 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 his style and, and, and everything about him, uh, being a warrior, uh, being quick, being fast, being um, somewhat tricky in the ring. Uh, all of those present problems for, for everyone else. I'm looking forward to showing the world that it presents no problems for me. Do you feel like it's uh, sort of like an unofficial title elimination where the guy that wins that fight can get in the mix for like either Garcia, Thurman winner, um, or one of the other guys? Yes, definitely. Uh, I fought, my last fight was for a belt. Uh, his last fight was against, uh, uh, well, yeah, his last fight was against uh, Mayweather, another great fight. So. I think we're both in line to fight for an eliminator, even if it's unspoken. Uh, we'll start talking it up right now. This is an eliminator to fight Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia. You've known him a long time, though, right? Yes, sir. How, yes, how's your sir. What kind of relationship you got with the guy? Uh, cool enough that I got his his his, his number in my back pocket. You got and, everybody's uh, number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and um, you know, cool enough that you know we'll see each other out here and it'll be all all hugs. And, that's it. Who, who brought that up to you? Like, was it? Did you say I'd like to fight that guy, or was it? Hayden well, that mentioned it, to you or it happened. Uh, it goes way back as far as maybe October. We started talking about possibly fighting Andre Berto, and then fast forward to uh, about a month ago, uh, we we did a, a call, call, a cold call, a FaceTime with the guy, and he said that he wanted to fight me. So, like, you just did it for the just heck of randomly. it. Randomly, yeah. Randomly. So you were talking to him on, on a Facebook yeah, Live. Yeah, fa and, um, fa um, FaceTime. And yeah, okay, FaceTime. And iPhone, how yeah. that? What was? <laughs> you called him up because you said I want to fight you. Or how's that? Talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I was like, I, I was doing an interview. And I was told that he said he wanted to fight me. I said, oh, really? Uh, this was supposed to happen a long time ago. And then I said, I'll, 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 uh, I'll text him. He said, no, let's FaceTime him. This okay. was at least setback. So we FaceTimed him, and um, and he said he wanted to fight. But he said he was on the toilet. He was on the toilet. He said he, said he, wanted, to, he wanted to fight, but the business had to make sense. So at this point, business will make sense in April. Is that the first time a fight ever got made with a guy on the can? Yes, sir. <laughs> first and definitely <laughs> the last. Hopefully the last. Definitely the last. No, no hopefully. Definitely the last. What kind of uh, fight you expect compared to like, a Thurman fight style-wise against Peru? Mm, 
I don't think Berto is going to move as much against me. Uh, I, I don't want to go tit for tat back and forth with this guy, but it can be that kind of fight because he's that fast and he's that much of a fighter that he, he won't allow me to just get off of him and move. He's going to try to, you know, make it a tit for tat game and catch me slipping, but uh, I don't want that. I, I want to be able to get in and get out or be on the inside and smother him and then move out of the way. So. Was there some other fight that you wanted besides that that was in your mind or was Berto the guy? Uh, no, guys it was uh, before it became Andre Berto, it was, it was definitely Keith Thumb in the rematch. Uh, I thought that that fight deserved a rematch right away, uh, but he moved in another direction. So. You can't blame him for going for unification, could you? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, the business makes sense for that and um, again, like you said, unifying the belt. So. Uh, that's 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 big for this sport. That's that's very big. Um, there's there's always a number of champions in each division, but when you can kind of eliminate everybody else and grab all those belts, that's what I want to do. So, uh, fun, definitely fun. The kid is slick. He's a southpaw. He's tall, rangy. He knows how to how to how to use his uh, his height and his range. Uh, the experience coming from the the amateur program and the Olympics. Uh, definitely was was fun getting in the ring with him. And he's gonna be sharp. He's gonna be sharp. Uh, I hear that the guy he's fighting is kind of a, a shorter, um, stocky guy gonna kind of come at him. So it, it'll make for an ex exciting action-packed fight. Um, but. I wouldn't be surprised if he stops this guy. Definitely, he's going to outbox him. Chuck, could you uh, answer the thing about the fact that uh, apparently in, in the in the judge's paperwork that was released yesterday of the Heyman lawsuit being dismissed by the judge against Golden Boy, mm -hmm. in the paperwork there was some discussion about how your father had contacted Golden Boy about to gauge their interest to see if Canelo wanted to fight you. What, what, can you can you expound about how that came out or what what went on with that? Uh, when, I didn't that was? I didn't see that. So I I didn't see that, but I do know that you know a fight with Canelo is something we we my dad and I have talked about for probably two or three years now uh, as far as him contacting Golden Boy I don't know uh, how much he contacted Golden Boy how much was said as far as this fighting Canelo so, you know when that was no I don't okay but I mean I, th I think it was probably after you fought Keith okay oh okay okay so, okay, okay. maybe it was before actually because that was last time yeah, that's news to me yeah so. I'll have to look and see but all right Sean Great fight that you had could have been fight of the year, but then of course it was, uh, you know, we're going to see uh, Saturday night, tomorrow night. How do you see that fight? This fight tomorrow night? Yes. Uh, I feel like it's going to be the same fight again. I feel like it's just a matter of who's going to make who miss and who's going to push who. Um, both these guys just have a warrior spirit and a heart to fight and punch. <laughs> They both love the punch. Uh, I've seen Frampton up close this time, this time around in his camp. So I know that he has some defense. I know that he has some quick, um, some quick feet, some quick hands, fast hands, and, and he can make a guy miss. So I do look to see him use better defense in this fight than he did in the previous fight. But it's hard to make uh, it's hard to make uh, Santa Cruz miss. And it's hard. It's very hard to make him stop. So I think it's going to be a, a fight a lot like the first. Uh, definitely pulling for Santa Cruz, good dear friend of mine. Um, pleasure to have met Frampton, also a friend of mine now. So like I told somebody earlier, either way I don't lose because both my friends are in there doing it and uh, they're both giving it all they got. And uh, at the end of the day, that's all we can ask for as fight fans. I, uh, I can't help but notice Paulie Malinaji is to your right and you're fighting Andre Berto. Yeah. Do you expect to have the same type of performance against Andre Berto as you had against Paul Malinaji? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> honestly, ever since that fight with, with, with Paulie, I think that kind of fight is the kind of fight that every fighter wants. Uh, after that fight, I said, man, 10 more of those and I'm done. You know, so <laughs> so uh, now I'm just counting on. I'm counting down. So I haven't had one since that, like, or I've only had one since that fight, uh, like that fight. So. Uh, if we can do that to, to Andre, we'll do that, but we look to, uh, as we develop the game plan, a big part of that game plan is uh, embarrassing him, uh, outclassing him, and, and showing that I'm on another level than he is. Were you disappointed that, I'm um, speaking of Paulie Malinaji, because we know you're definitely one of the cleanest fighters in the game, that he said quite possibly that you were uh, using a performance enhancing drug that I, uh, you know, at this point, back then, it was it was whatever I felt you know I felt like you know 
I felt like he was complimenting me at some point. At this, at this point, this juncture, I just want my my uh, my compliment as far as me being uh, a good fighter and 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 doing what I do um, and doing it healthy, healthy and and cleanly. Um, that's, everything I do is is, is clean. It's uh, it's 100 hard work and uh, and uh, and that's it. Uh, so at this point, you know, if he if he ever walks up to me and says, "Hey, man, I'm sorry I said those things about you. You're a good fighter. I know you are. Uh, continue to do what you're doing. I'll be more than happy." Outside of that, you know, I don't have any other words from him other than, "Hey, how's it going?" Oh, I love it. I love it. As you, as you can see, it, man, he's right behind me right now. Uh, you know, yeah, he's miss, he's he's my dad when my dad's not around. You know what I mean by that is, uh, I haven't met anybody else that's gonna push me the way he's pushed me, or anybody else that's gonna look after me the way he looks after me. Uh, definitely a, a great coach, great inspiration, uh, a great man. Uh, I've learned a lot from him uh, in and out of the ring, on and off the track, uh, in and out of the workouts. Um, things that I'm going to hand down to my children, uh, things that I'm going to hold in, 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 close to my heart and in my mind for a very long time. One of the reasons you have increased power is working it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I swear to God, we're talking about that today. We're talking about how <laughs> we're talk. He called me, um, got some tests done, um, looking at the different percentages around my body, where we can um, pick up some explosion, pick up some some uh, muscle, and uh, meanwhile monitor the weight and the body fat as well. Uh, some key elements to uh, a person, individual, uh, any day. But you know, as far as the sport that I do, the things that I'm doing. Uh, he's he's trying to really um, be precise, making sure that next time I get in the ring, as, as strong and as explosive as I can be, just as fast and as quick. You talked about you and your dad talked about the Canelo fight for two, three years. You're in the welterweight division. Which is what made you kind of look up and, and say? Just know. seeing what he was doing, seeing the way his, his his career was moving, seeing that he was becoming someone hot in this sport, and um, you know. Hoping, wondering, could we get an opportunity to, you know, make a name off of, off of what he was doing, you know? So uh, that that was two or three years ago when we started talking about him. Um, that fight has never left either of our minds. But uh, like you just said, we're welterweight, so um, it was a long way from there, I think. But you were willing to. I know you in the amateur. I think you fought as high as 160 something. Yes, sir. So you you, you would be okay moving up to 154. Yes, sir. There's no problem making 147. Yes, sir. Right now. Yes, sir. No, no problems at all. Again, we we're looking at the blood and and the body fat and, and all that kind of stuff right now as we speak. So uh, everything is still moving at the what's weight division right now, uh, and and that's all I can say about it right now. Uh, that fight is made, right? Yeah, I'm like, whoa, okay. Uh, I think it's a fight that um, Canelo's going to dominate, but I can't get over how big uh, Chavez is. I think that that is going to make a difference uh, in the fight that we've seen Canelo in against anyone else. Uh, a lot like we've never seen him fight anyone like Mayweather, and we saw what Mayweather did to him. We've never seen him fight anyone as big as Chavez, so I think it's going to be good. Do you think Canelo, it says that if you fought him, you can take advantage of uh, yeah, quickness, um, hand speed, uh, footwork. I think a lot of those things have have uh, gotten better for him since he fought Mayweather. Uh, those were the, the key elements that I thought were going to play uh, a big, very big role for me uh, before he fought Mayweather. I think that he's improved on those things, but those those things I can still also uh, exploit him in and, and be better than him. We saw what he did to Amir. Um, you see yourself in that position. If you wow. get hit with that shot, I mean, you know what I mean? Wow. Uh, no, 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 no. That shot, if anyone gets hit with it, that's, that's the shot that you go down off of. Uh, a great punch at the great at the, the right time. Um, I am different from from uh, Amir Khan, where you know I don't just go in throwing punches and leaving my head there. I don't rush a guy straight forward, you know, and I don't pull straight back. So. We work on moving left and right for a reason. For guys like Camilla who will have heavy hands and can throw bombs, uh, there's other ways to make a miss than just moving straight out. You know, sometimes you gotta go to, to the power, and sometimes you gotta be smart with your defense. So, um. who, when you spar, who's the biggest fighter size-wise you ever spar? Um, I believe it or not, I, I, I spar with Chad Dawson. <laughs> I spar with Chad Dawson. I spar with Chad Dawson when I was like 
18 or 19. That's crazy. He was so, and when he was at the top of his game, and I did very, very, very well with him. Um, I've sparred with um, Andre Durrell. Um, yeah, so I mean, we better better off talking about who, who the smallest guy I've sparred with. <laughs> you spar Caleb Plant too. Right? Uh, yeah, I just, oh yeah, I just spar. Yeah, yeah, we spar. spar. I've sparred with Caleb, Caleb Plant, so we're, we're looking to get back in the room with Caleb. Um, we've been able to do some really good things with him, improve on some things with him. So, and he's here in the city now. So, uh, a great person, great fighter, someone to have in, in the camps and, and things like that. So, uh, I would say probably the smallest guy that name that you guys would know would probably be Provotnikov. <laughs> I don't think I'm smaller than anyone smaller. As far as anyone smaller than him or or How Manny. Hard did he hit, Charles? People say that he hit the hardest. Uh, I was on my game. Yeah, he he really didn't hit me. At all, uh, we, I think we might have done four rounds. And it was it was a quick, fast four rounds. Um, not very, you know, uh, eventful at all. You know, I was in and out. You know, on top of my game. That was probably three or four. That was like four years ago. So, do you guys do you like sparring with other top guys, or at this level you just don't do that anymore? As far as preparing for fights and uh, no, I like sparring with top guys. Still, top guys will pull the best out of me. <clears throat> Coach Wade can. Attest to that that you know if you don't have a name, if you don't have some 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 experience as a pro, then uh, I might get bored and, and and lay off and. But there's also one other thing that he's not bringing up, which is Sean. The same way you see him on fight night, he's in there being as active and as aggressive and sparring, and a lot of times guys don't make it through camp. So only guys who are who are competing at the top level are able to maintain and stay in camp with him because, just to be honest with you, a lot of the guys who are not at that level break down relatively early, so they don't make it through camp. So in order for him to perform at the highest level and actually get the most out of a camp, he has to get guys who are already relatively decent or even at that level to maintain. So that's what he's not telling me. Are you sometimes surprised when you spar a big name and how well you do? Because it's uh, I think I've always been like that. Uh, going as far as back as far sparring with uh, Chad Dawson, I that was so long ago that I don't remember it, you know, round for round. But I remember just boxing so well against him, and that was when I, I was in the amateur program. I think that was right around 2006 or seven. Uh, so again, he was at the top of his game, and a guy as big and as rangy as he was, I was able to make him miss, get in and get out. And very quick. So a lot of the things that I do now, I've just really kind of molded together from a very young age, and just be everything you see nowadays is everything that I used to do, and I just do it at a higher level. Danny Jacobs, Triple G. Oh, I'm excited for that. I, I hope I can get to that one. Uh, I know I'll be in camp, and uh, you know uh, that's near the middle of, of 18, March, I March believe. 18. Yeah. So. Uh, I hope I can get to that one. I want Danny. Go I, I want Danny Jacobs to win that fight. Uh, him and I have a long, long, long history, and um, and I, I just I pull for him no matter who he's up against, no matter what he's up against, and uh, we all know his story. So uh, definitely a fight that we've been waiting to see him be in for a very long time now. I, I'm looking forward to that fight. How do you beat Canelo? Um, I think you beat Canelo with hand speed. I think you. And, and, and stamina, you got to be able to maintain that, not not just for one round or two rounds, but yeah, he's someone that's going to take you into the deep waters of 10, 11, and 12 rounds. So you have to have good hand speed, good footwork, and uh, be able to make a miss. And you talked about uh, Birdo, you fighting Birdo in April. That's not for the belt, but it's quite possibly for like a step up in terms of public notoriety mm -hmm. because Birdo is real popular on social media. Mm -hmm. He's like a contemporary celebrity. Yeah. Uh, talk about how how good that would feel to yeah, that, finally get the respect from like somebody's girlfriend yeah. as opposed to just being a diehard <laughs> yeah. boxing fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, one of my friends said, um, I, I heard you might be fighting Bay. I said, what? <laughs> I heard you might be fighting Andre Berto. I said, yeah, maybe. He said, well, if you fight him, he can't be Bay no more. But like, like you just said, a lot of, lot of, lot of women, uh, guys, a lot of people know him from his, so, from his social media. So uh, we're at a point now in this sport, man, where there's just more to gain than just a belt or just some money or um, you know, just climbing the ranks. Um, we're at an age now where 
For some reason, social media means a lot to a lot of people, and by a lot, I mean millions, not just hundreds, you know, not just thousands, but millions of people. They, they watch us, they look forward to seeing what we're going to do, and, um, you know, uh, like you said, you make just as much of a name for yourself being on Showtime as you do being Showtime Sean P is my handle so follow me y'all follow me <laughs> <laughs> so uh but yeah so um i don't want to make it a social media battle but uh we'll see maybe we'll have some fun sean what do you think about manny pacquiao's beat because you said for you it's always finding the one the top three mm -hmm. does manny still fit in the top three uh, in, in the welterweight or is he, he kind of a forgotten guy to now? me he does and that could be because he's someone i looked up to someone that uh, I've admired for a long time someone that I went up against and um, I think I, I think it could be a biased opinion of mine that I, I still consider him to be um, someone that is you know even if he doesn't have that number one two or three behind it behind his name I, I, I consider him someone to be uh, at the top of, of my division in, in the sport. Are guys still clamoring to fight him? I know before like two three years ago we asked the world who do you want to fight, Manny or Floyd? Yeah. Now, Floyd's gone. And Manny's on his way out. A lot, yeah. a lot of people are, are saying it's not Manny. I feel like I'm kind of replacing Manny now. Uh, I think, you know, from the standpoint of, of um, where I am in my career, uh, being, you know, in my prime, uh, being, you know, someone that can contend and beat anyone in the top two or three, four or five, uh, yeah, those guys are moving out and those shoes are being filled. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the man's shoes now. Do, do you still look at him, I don't know, for a while he had like an arm of invincibility, you know, could he be beat? Do you, do you <laughs> as a fighter still see man in the same way or is he just, just like a more beatable, bigger fight for you now? Or you still see him as a... I always felt I could beat Manny, uh, after, at, at, and then obviously after being in the ring with him, I knew what I could do against yeah. him. Um, but even then, yeah, when the first time I sparred him, he fought Kolo, I felt like he was invincible. Second time I, I sparred him, he fought Shane Mosley, I felt like he was invincible. I think that invincibility has kind of gone away, uh, but definitely, like you said, someone that, that, that you could beat, um, that has a name behind him. Not only that, he still has his entire country behind him. Um, still a lot of fans around the world behind him, and he still has that uh, that, that status uh, uh, with money behind him. You found him at when he was like in his prime when he was that man. Even yeah, did, did I sparred him when he was when he was doing when he was he was the man. Like nobody wanted to fight Manny back then. Yeah. And when you sparred him, did you try to really put your all into it and try oh, to yes. get him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like 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 uh, Coach Way here yeah. said behind me. When I spar, I'm always, you know, I'm always going 80, 85, 90 uh, percent. Sometimes we reach that 100 percent, him and I, when we spar. A lot of people that saw I spar, um, uh, at least said back here, had, had the, had the pl privilege of seeing the spar. And you saw nothing but fun, nothing but, but pizzazz, and just a lot of excitement and charisma from both corners in the ring. And um, So, yeah, I, I think I got a real test of what I could do in the ring. I didn't get a test of someone, you know, going 60%, 50% because it's fun. I, I really made him raise his levels. But that's why and now he won't fight you. Because <laughs> no, I'm serious, because he sparred you a few times and he knows it's a, he's not gonna win. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that could be true. That could be true. Knowing what I what we did way back then, um, him being honest with himself, knowing that he doesn't have everything that he had back then, and also knowing that I'm coming into my prime, so. Yeah, I, I, that could be why he doesn't win fight. Me. How about LeBron James saying he needs more to win the championship? He does, man. He does. <laughs> I um, I, and I love his, I love his supporting cast, but I think he could be better. I think he could be stronger. Um, I think we need a stronger center. I think Tristan Thompson does a great job rebounding the ball. We need someone that can score the ball a little bit, a little bit more, and be stronger against someone in the paint as well. So. Um, but uh, you put me on the spot. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not an NBA player or anything <laughs> like that. I don't want these guys to be mad at me. Uh, so don't don't put that out there. That, that I just said that. That answer was for you. <laughs>
Um, Would you trade Kevin Love for Carmelo Anthony? I never wanted to trade Kevin Love for uh, the rookie that we had coming in, um, Wiggins. I never wanted to, I never wanted that that trade. We had three number one draft picks on the same team. I thought I think we would be a much stronger team now. Our our team would be a lot like the Golden State Warriors uh, mm. in turn it, all the way around. I, I say. I don't think I could do that anymore. Like, I, even now, like, last year I was looking at it like, eh, I might be able to. Now, now I'm starting to be like, I'm starting to approach that never never again type of situation. But um, I, I'm not good enough to be a, a professional basketball player, big enough. Uh, I'm quick enough, fast enough, but I, I don't have enough uh, on, the, on the basketball court to do what it takes. But I think if I could be successful and one of – the two it would probably be the NBA because it's less uh, physical. <laughs> is, uh, yeah, it's less is, physical. Is losing uh, to Andre Ward part of the training regimen? Uh, became part of the tra tra training regimen that night. Uh, I think I got some push-ups in yeah. a little sooner than, than Coach Wade wants me to get them in. Uh, we're uh, like, again, like I said before, we're looking at packing on some mass before this this next fight, some muscle mass before this next fight, and so we're we're gonna get um, into some some into a good program before this next fight. My last question: You don't get credit for it for throwing jabs. You out jab. Keith Thurman in the last Probably fight. Jab every fighter I, I'm in the ring with. Can, can you speak to why you don't get credit? Is it because I, I don't, you tell us? I don't want to answer. My that. jab is masked, masked behind. It's masked behind um, um, statistics. Statistics say that because I'm five seven. Um, I shouldn't be able to jab as much as I jab, uh, but statistically, my arm is longer than the average 5'7 uh, fighter. Uh, statistically, because I have the body structure that I have, I'm someone that is supposed to be aggressive, supposed to go to the body, work from the bottom to the top. A lot of times I do that in my fights, but a lot of times I start that with the jab um, and without giving too much out there, uh, I rely on my jab probably more than any other punch that I throw. So, with that being said, when someone looks at me, they say he shouldn't be able to jab you, uh, but they don't know that I work on my jab just as much as I work on probably any other punch, if not more. And Mr. Wade can attest to that. I probably work on the jab more than I work on any other punch um, that, that, that a boxer may throw. So, um, that's why I out jab every other fighter that I'm in the ring with, which is why I'm going to continue to out jab any other fighter that I'm in the ring with. I consider it a challenge. And what I mean by that is I'm not challenged just by the fighter that I'm in the ring with, but I'm challenged by the world to show you guys that someone that is short, um, has a lot of muscle, can still throw a jab, be fast from the outside as well as the inside. Tomorrow's fight between two guys who really respect each other in San Francisco Brampton. You have the same thing with you and Keith really respect each other, not a lot of trash talk. How important is that at the state of the 